In 2021, I had the opportunity to preach at Kenyatta Road SDA Church in Georgia. It was a health Sabbath. Last year, I also had an opportunity to stand at the pulpit of a Sabbath school. Me is the children of God during an AMM, AMM Sabbath. In all those occasions, they send their greetings and they have the opportunity to bring those greetings to you. Do you accept those greetings better late than never? I am a woman of power. I also go by the name of Joka Sonye. I am fourth in the lineage to my great grand, great great grandfather who was called Sonye. The woman name is that named after one of Kenyan's illustrious sons, Professor Uma Moka, the late. I don't aspire to uh, be great in the uh, aspects of the realms that he pursued. My desire is that of Paul preach Jesus and him crucified, and that's the sole business why I'm here today. That's what we pursue today. I don't consider myself a very good speaker, but I enjoy good discussions. So if you find a weakness or two with my speaking today, you will indulge me. But I pray more that you would pray that the Holy Spirit Open your eyes as Elijah prayed that he said to Gehazi, Gehazi's eyes would be open that you would see the armies of the Lord encompassing about them as the Syrians were approaching to attack the armies of Israel. We are all aware that uh, a lot is happening in our world. And the preachings by the choir, the preaching by Sister Dorothy. And uh, the special team that presented one of uh, songs that is commonly used in ministry, Seeking the Lost, has uh, spoken it all. So I don't have much work to do. I also believe that we are aware that we are called for a special mission. Visually put that the books of Revelations, you know, we are called the testimony of God and you know, the, you know <laughs> to keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Now, for an Adventist, to settle yourself into spirit of prophecy is not an option. Because that is what we identify with. That is what makes us who we are. When you read the establishment of this church, it is founded on very solid grounds. The spirit of prophecy. Health message, name it. We all know. And if you are not yet aware, we should be aware. Uh, 2030 years ago, a racket man by the name John, born to remote Jews, Elizabeth and Zechariah, was called to a special mission. Cousin of Jesus Christ, three months, Jesus the senior, very humble man. Man who wore just gold skins and ate honey and locusts. Most of the time, he would retire to the mountain to meditate on the word of God. But the word of God reminds me that he was not a hermit because often he would come down to minister to the souls or the impending appearance of Jesus Christ in this body of man. The incarnated God. Call them to the message of repentance. I believe this message was not very popular then. I believe it was not very special. He had, he had what we would call a flat taste of things. When people are eating milk and honey, when people are eating very, you know, <laughs> exotic cuisines, this was honey and locusts. When people are doing designers, this was Gotsky. 
That was the man, John the Baptist. I believe when you were on a special mission, such as John's, then as Christians, our life ought to be different. First Peter 2 9. It's the first one. The call to be peculiar. I'm always reminded by one very powerful speaker in our church. That is key. Being peculiar doesn't mean being peculiar. Being queer. Being queer. Means we have to live the life that we have been called to do, uh, called to, so that, like moths, like the lamp, lamp upon the stand, we can draw people. Uh, the way moths are attracted to some certain light, that when we leave Jesus, we may speed up his return. We always say Jesus has delayed. The book of Hebrews, I suppose, tells us for people wondering. It's our fathers. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. He has not come. A day is like unto God. A thousand years is like unto God for like a day. Right? This world has existed for how long? Six thousand plus years. Is it? Is that the case? So many days are those? We have not even a for a week as per God's view of matters. We are into the seventh day, according to God. So we are the delayers, we are the ones today in God's return. I believe God, reading keenly into the life of John the Baptist, was sort of a reformer. In eating, in eating of locusts and honey, I see health reform. In going for the very flat things of the world, Adorning himself into God's hair when he had all the options to look important before people, before the Sanhedrin, and be, before the people who mattered then, he adorned God's kids. So even as we read very keenly along those lines, if you are calling to these peculiar missions, then we ought also to show it by the life that we are living. It behooves me, therefore, to also make quick reference the servant of the Lord that uh, the message which we have been called to preach and which we always say and utter in our pulpit, the three angels message, is one that we now need to really emphasize on because the world is really on a downward spiral. You talk about the three angels message, you won't waste time. You should not even think twice know that the three angels message goes closely with the health reform. So we are called to be health reformers because as the book of John tells us that is the wish of God that we prosper in health even as our spirit prospers. So this man, a cousin to John, Jesus has come, he is now, now in prison. Was speaking a popular message, and Jesus has not visited with him. And then he tells the disciples, the disciples were now following him, that now this is he who takes away this, the, the sins of the world, now follow him. And John is also a little troubled because time is passing and perhaps his execution is sneering. But the Savior has not, perhaps come very closer to comfort him. And his weak human body is like giving in to the message that is preached very ardently. So he sent the disciples to go and confirm with Jesus if really he is the spoken of the Savior who is who was to come who was to come to take away the, the sins of the one that he had always preached and believed. Then Jesus tells them to go and tell John that the sick are healed. You know, uh, 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 suffering is relief. But Jesus asks another thing. Maybe you've heard of mighty prophets, but is Jesus says something very important that strikes me. Of all the children born of men and women, there has never existed a greater one. I think there will never be one greater than John the Baptist. So even in the simple things of life, we can be great in the sight of God. 
Oh yes, I'm telling you. So what went you out to see? Are you shaking in the wind? Nay, I tell you, all the sons of all the children, all the men, one of men and women, there's never been a greater one like you, the Baptist. We are also in that taking time bomb. Jesus is almost coming. We have seen wars, rumors of war. We have seen the economy collapsing. It began prominently lately with Greece. If some of us were a little bit older. And we are we are witnessing it here in our country today. The bottom up is proving to be not really bottom line up like we are meant to believe. But it's like top topest or something like that. I don't know what to call it. And people are losing track of like things are just very slippery. They're not coming to policies. We have got policies here and there to try and ratify these things. Nothing is holding water. And two weeks ago, we have seen what's going on in the Middle East, and I'm afraid it might get worse. I don't preach get worse, but I'm afraid it might get worse. Because since the World War II, which ended in 1945, I have never in my life, my little life, witnessed an event that has become so emotive to the people the world over, and that even superpowers, America, America always guts its mouth on issues, security. They don't talk loosely. I think the, the latest loose talker was the one who just was just before Biden. But their presidents have been reserved what issues they give it. They don't want to be seen to be taken seriously, but of course we know the part they play. He's the beast of the land, Revelation 13. That's going to give power to the beast that came from the sea of the United States of America. So we saw him, we saw them declare that with the state of Israel. And if you read keenly in the book of Daniel, that we're going to settle on in a few minutes. A little issue about America is it was a land that was inhabited. Actually, that's why Revelation 13 11, when it's mentioned to the United States of America, it says a beast that came from the land. The other ones came from the sea, and seen we, 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 we settled it that it is many people. But America started in a land that was inhabited. And their mantra was they were looking for a nation that was not inhabited, that was not um, uh, ruled by monarchists. And that was not spiritually guarded or rather controlled by papists. Because there had been so much, there had been people who had been prosecuted from countries and countries left, right, and center. So in their constitution, the preamble is with the people. And the dollar is in God we trust. So when America began its pure form, it was a very holy nation, a nation that is teamed God. Everything was right and it was prospering. And when the corrupt nations saw that whatever was happening in America, they flocked there, and America is slowly getting corrupted. In fact, as corrupted as it is, even here in Kenya, now the Greek, the DD lottery is, is out, and we are all applying. And we are saying it's the American dream. The glorious land. Glorious land. So we saw uh, uh, the physical Israel and the glorious land, which I would also see is now the spiritual, sort of. Actually, the spiritual. Spiritual. If you read the book of Revelation, when it talks about the glorious land, that's the United States of America. You saw them stand up in unity and declare a stand against Hamas. And by extension, extension, especially following the events that happened in 2001, if we are all aware, a certain religion is going to get worse, let us back to love. We are almost done. We just work uh, for, for, for people who have 
been keen on prophecy studies, the text that was read is one that cannot be given in a sermon. That is a text that runs for like even two weeks. Just studying Daniel 11, 40, 45. So we will just touch on it. So don't be so much disappointed. If you don't really exhaust it. But the Holy Spirit is going to guide us into that study. Um, a quick preview to what leads us into 11, 40 to 45. Uh, this is what the servant of the Lord has to say about Daniel chapter 11, the prophet of the Lord. In the view of the Herald 24, 19, 0, 4, she says, The world is stirred with the, the spirit of war. The prophecies of the 11th chapter of Daniel have almost reached their final fulfillment. That was in 1904. In 1904 to date, we have 119 years post the proclamation of this statement. So if you are familiar with number lines, where you come from the negative, you get to zero, then you move positively, then we all agree that as you move, Forward, then you are advancing. So if there is something that is ahead of you, if you are at 1904, you have moved 19 steps, then you are even closer that week. You are looking forward to it. We are looking forward to the glorious return and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But before that, what happens? The New chapter 11, verses 1, talks about the myths uh, and, uh, and Persia. But a quick preview, uh, these kingdoms are talked about in Daniel chapter 2, 7, 8, and 11. In 2, 7, and 8, the Bible, or the prophet of the Lord, gives us the delineation of the world's kingdom in symbols. But when he gets to chapter 11, he uses very plain language. Very plain. So that we can never falter. We had the opportunity of reading about the revelation in one of the quarters, I think the second, I suppose. And we did agree that uh, prophecies are for all of us. They are not for a select people. One of the things that we said is that prophecy gives us way marks that we may never stumble on the way. So we ought to read prophecy. I see in your faces a lot of, many of you are drivers, in fact, just in front of me is an expert, pilot. So he knows when I talk about waymarks on the roads. You miss a sharp bend somewhere. Some forces, whether it is centrifugal or whatever, are going to act on you and you're going to veer off the road, roll several, and perhaps if you're not so lucky, if you did buckle up and your vehicle uh, was not very strong, you might never remember what happened. On that road trip, we marks. So we begin from. We finish that. I believe so. Uh, okay. Verse 3, 11 3 talks about Alexander the Great. 11 4 talks about the Grecian kingdom, and we all know that the Grecian kingdom was divided uh, among the generals of. Alexander, a young man who died in his prime age, but was a war genius. Alexander the Great. You know, it's not very easy to have a, a, an adjective become part of your name. The Great. Alexander the Great was a war genius. So the kingdoms were divided into four territories. Along the campus direction, north, south, east, and west, so we had Cassandra's, uh, Lesichimas, Seleucius, and Ptolemy. But this kingdom struggled because they could not live together. And only two were left. Ptolemy, who took the southern part, that is Egypt, and Seleucius, who took the north region, that's the region of Syria, and was headquartered in Babylon. 1 Corinthians 15, 46. 
Albeit that which was not spiritual, but that which was physical, and then that which is spiritual. When you read the word of God, God uses human language first to things that are familiar to us. Even when you read the parables of Jesus, it's talking about very familiar things first. But then it's deriving very great spiritual lessons. So when you are going to read about the king of the north, the king of the south, in the context of this book, Daniel chapter 11, we first begin by what we know. The king of the south and the king of the north, south, Egypt, north, Syria, the headquarter is in Babylon. So when it gets the spiritual meaning here, what do you know about Egypt, for example? Exodus 5, chapter 2. <laughs> Who is God that I should let the children of Israel go? Who is God? The children of Israel have suffered in slavery for 430 years. And their masters are not relenting. God, in his mercy, hears their plea and chooses a nobody. I like how it works. He chooses nobodies. He chooses a nobody. What? The first call is like, God, I am not worthy of this call. I am not. I am not. I am of a heavy tongue. I cannot do it. But we have got an exchange there, and finally Moses relents and says, Lord, I will go. Because he's given his elder brother Aaron, the God promises to be in front of him, and he claims that promise, and then he goes. And we have got an, got an exchange. Unfamiliar message. Let my people go. Like, what do you mean? So you are lazy. I mean, you even have time to think about a God other than the gods of Egypt. So you come here to abscond duty. You want to worship God. Who is this God that I should let people go? As you derive the spiritual meaning from the physical meaning, it should be that which, as a global perspective, it has got. Is that a message we should start the world? It should be uh, universal. And in all those messages, the world should be started with that message. And there should be a separation. And there is, it will always follow some sort of persecution. Whenever you are deriving the, the spiritual from the physical, in the context of the king of the north and the king of the south. And then there's judgment. God drinks judgment. We saw what God did. With, with the physical Egypt. He rain judgment. He says, you are troubling my firstborn Israel. I am going to kill your firstborns. And at the tenth plague, Pharaoh did let Israel go. Uh, chapter 11 begins with, at the time of the end. Actually, uh, 40, 45. 45 begins with, at the time of the end. But before you get to 45, there's another mention of them at the time of the end in 11.35. When you read Kingly, Pagan Rome has metamorphosized to Papa Rome. And the preceding verses are talking about persecution of God's people by this power. And when the persecution ends, after God's interposition, and we all aware that that persecution began in 538, when the Roman Catholic promulgated Pope as the vicar of Christ here on earth. The declaration was first done in AD 34, but in 538 AD it was promulgated. We are all aware of what happened with our constitution. It was promulgated in 2010. Officially put into works or action. And uh, the Bible says in Daniel 11 35, maybe I can read 34. Now, when they shall fall, they shall be open with a little help, but many shall creep to them with flutteries. One of the things that really put this persecution into check 
what's the information? Be done with the Luther, you have the Waldenses, you have people like John Weekly, you have Haas and Jerome, you have with Tyndall. Name them. Then we come to the Millerites, the Hotel in Wine, the formation of our church, the official establishment in Bad Creek, Michigan in 18, 1860? 63. Six, 1863, I suppose. That has been our church. 35. And some, 1135 of Daniel, and some of them, and some of the understanding shall fall to try them and to buy and to make them white even to the time of the end because it is yet for an appointed time. 1140, and at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. Who is the king of the south pushing at? It's pushing at the king of the north. We agreed that. The physical derivation of the king of the south, actually because of the geographical location, is Egypt. So Egypt was an unbelieving nation. It is exemplified by what we read in Genesis 5, Exodus 5, 2. Who is God? In about this year, 1758 to 1798, there was what we call French Revolution. Earlier on in 496, Pope Clovis had, pro, uh, had, profess, uh, had, 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 um, had declared his support for the king, for, for, for the Pope. But then there are three nations that, among the ten parts of Rome, that did not agree with the other seven, because Rome was divided into ten parts. So we read of the Heruli, the Ostrobor, from the Bonnets. And because they refused to support the Pope, they were conquered, and their issue was forgotten in history. So in 1798, we had the French Revolution, and during those days, the French government declared anything. They, they were totally like this religion. We had the people changing days of the week from 7 to 10. Anything godly was averse to this nation. In fact, the word atheism or atheism in, in English is derived from the word atheism in French, which means not to believe in God. I mean, um, this is what it says. The word athe, athe, atheism, atheism in French in English is atheism is derived from the word the French word atheism. In about 1587, the term atheist, in the sense of one who is denies who disbelieves the existence of God, and that stand by the French government was catastrophic. People always lay claim when things go wrong in governments to the believers. You remember King Ahab asking Isaiah, or, or no, Elijah, are you the trouble of the nation? You are the traveler of the nation. When the little believing flock should for a moment cease to exist, then we will be able to see the full power and measure of what really evil is. What we are seeing are just tokens of evil. When you see what is going on in the Middle East, those are tokens of evil. Because we are aware that angels, that's revelation, Seven. Seven. And holding the four corners of the weight. So that the servants of God can be seen. So about that time, the spiritual Egypt was France. What happened? Pope Pius took Pope. Uh, 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 we are got uh, Bathia. General Bathia took Pope Pius into captivity. So the Bible, that's what the Bible says commonly that uh, the beast. Deceived the mortal wound. But we also read in history that over the period of time that wound shall heal. We cannot delve into a lot of that now. But then when you go, when you go, you now see, read that, still at fault. The king of the north is now coming for the king of the south. We read that about the king of the north, and we said it, uh, it was the region of Syria and Babylon. When the two kingdoms were divided, it was the north. 
Who do you know about Babylon? We talk about Babylon, we talk about Babel. We talk about Babel, you remember the people who are very defiant. Very defiant. You know, against God. And they were trying to put up some things to reach heaven. God had commanded them to multiply and fill the earth. But they had other, other ways of doing things. Other ways of doing things. You know, you can always be creative with what God has said. And we know the other result of that. God uh, discomfited them. And we have got now several languages that we now have. So, we have uh, uh, Babylon. First, it will metamorphosize into. When you read, actually, when you put it in the context of Revelation, uh, my time is going so much so. Because I, I am one of. Okay, let me chapter 40. Let me chapter 40. 40 11 talks of a race of taxes. Because at this point, we're talking about the Roman kingdom. And that was Caesar Augustus. And who succeeded Caesar Augustus? That was Tiberius and Caesar. Still talking about that power, the Roman power, it began as uh, Pagan Rome. There's a characteristics in that one, it has now metamorphed, metamorphed to, you know, a Pagan Rome. Because it says now that it now polluted the sanctuary. If you read it in context with Daniel 7 and 8, you will be left with no doubt to conclude that that power we are talking about, the king of the north, is now Papa Rome. But also we are aware that Papa Rome is not working in isolation. Read the book of Revelation 13. There is also a threefold union. Threefold union. We talk about the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. We are very clear about who the dragon is. Is Satan? Is is is, is the devil? Okay. We talk about the beast. What are we talking about? Talk about Papa Rome. Talk about the false prophets. We are talking about a conglomeration of <laughs> the United States of America. We are talking about the apostates, prostates, prostates. We understand that when the churches rebel from the first church on grounds of religion or on doctrines that were not biblically based, they were of one accord that they wanted to find God for themselves and look into pure religion. But over time, some of them grew away and over time they have been finding sympathy and going back to their mother. So that is what we mean here. Uh, the time is gone. The time is gone. In 1989 something happened. Uh, we had got the fall of the Berlin Wall. Uh, uh, so in short, what you are saying, uh, after the World War II, there was a, a interview of what we call the Cold War. Where nations were striving for supremacy. Uh, economically, technologically, name it, in all forms of advancements. That is why we, we bought into a story in primary, I don't know when I, where I read it, that somebody went into the moon in 1960-something. Somebody Armstrong. Almost 60 years later, no one has ever gone back to the moon and reported to us what happened there. But almost on a weekly basis, we have got space missions to the mass, mass, where, where. I don't know what happened to the moon. The first uh, people did find it quite interesting to go and give us more information if there is any advancement there. That is quite interesting. So we have America who is a prodigy of the king of the north. Now, working so hard to dethrone communism, which is now the king of the south as at the year eight, 1989. So the king of the north dethrones the king of the south in 1989. We can talk a lot about that, but time is not our side. In conclusion, I say, when 
the king of the north, for it to get its dominance, it had to dethrone three territories or three kingdoms, which we mentioned earlier. For the spiritual king of the north also, it has to dethrone three kingdoms. That is why it says it will flew into the countries, three of them. In 1981, it dethroned one, which is atheism. The next one is going to dethrone the United States of America, when the delineation between the churches and the state is going to be washed away, and they're going to marry it one. They're going to speak the same language. Finally, we are hearing the world over about a United Nation. We are hearing of world current currencies. We even have the International Court. Where if you commit a, a crime so grave, even in your village, Okampo can come for you. And it will be worse for you if it will be worse for you if you don't have a very smart lawyer. Smart, smart in the sense of this one. Those two are remaining. The second one is almost. Every evidence is showing us. The lead is always in our nation. We are seeing that association, that union. When that one happens, we come to a new world order. The National Sunday Law is going to be passed. And the events after that will be rapid, rapid, and rapid. And uh, I today stand here to say that the future of this church lies in these youth. In fact, I was not, I was part of when I learned they are going to Josca. But still, we still, this is a youthful church. I thank God today I can see very far. I can see Brother Bill there at the corner. Form. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This is a youthful church. The future of this church, especially the department of the SUPVOP, lies in this youth. This youth, no matter their disposition in life, we as adults must lift their hands. When it's going to pay you, pay your pocket, or anything, we must lift them up. The few sharing I have done with you are things that the Lord, by his mercies, led me to, I was, to study. I was really even very active in those studies. But, you know, I was in a center of people who were, who were like, Mamuli Matatu. Kukula, Kusoma, na Kuomo. Niyaka hizo, yakai. So that's where I got to learn about God, the word of God, the necessity to settle in truths. God is calling us into an intelligent settling in truth. We have little time. But to do is sir. Lakini, the lily zotes in Atonesia kwamba kuja kwake ni karibu. Uh, I'm calling upon the youths. If you feel you want to make the most of this time, because youth is fleeting, I can tell you that for sure. As conspicuous as I appear, we are not conspicuous. I used to be. Uh, What's the conversion rate for kgs to pounds? Two, two. You multiply by two. Or one point something. Almost two. One point six. I used to weigh over two hundred pounds. I was strong when I was young. Today I'm old. I'm graying. I'm balding. If you come closer to me, you see me balding. If I, when I go back to my days and teachers, I find I don't have that youthful strength. I don't know even where it's going. But someone is feeding. It's feeding. Sometimes I want to push myself to a little extra in the day, but the the the, 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 the holding the holding me, the old IMG me, cannot push that extra mile. 
Youths, I call upon you. If you want to stand to be counted in this dark hours of the earth's history, and for the sake of not being discriminative, we are going to base it on the 35, the Kenyan constitution, what it stipulates, stand up. If you want to identify with your Christ, I am telling you, you don't have much time. If you want to wait till you get work, if you want to wait till you get a spouse, if you want to wait until you rise to some managerial line in your career, I tell you, it might delay. God is not in the business of fulfilling your heart's desires for your own gratification. If you sit back and wait for such, then it will take you through a learning process. And then you will continue waiting for the job. I am a testimony of that. You will wait. As you wait, you will encounter challenges. So, to the point that even death itself, death itself, I'm putting Sister Ellen White, can seem a welcome relief from parents too heavy to bear in this life. Youth, I am saying, if you are below 35 and you want to identify with Christ, you want to identify with the SOPVOP department, rise up. And we are going to hand over this mantle to the, to the youth. I challenge the leadership of this church to bestow the mantle of this department to these youths. They hold the future of this church. There's always a witness when we meet for elections to see, oh, who was the leader the other time? Oh, he can do it. He can speak his and words. So he can express himself. That is not it. These youths are going to propel this church, and this church is going to grow, not just for this PPOP department, but in other lines. That the church is committed to reaching out to the dying world. Thank you, my two brothers. God bless you. If you are as old as I am and above, <laughs> you know, for me, growing up, I've never known what it means to be young because I, I come from a family where maybe I've taken. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit. But today, by the lost mass, I am. I'm shrinking. I'm not starving. But uh, it's deliberate. So in this church, a good friend of mine was asking me, is this your granddaughter? You know, Ellen Marie happens to be my first daughter. Is this your granddaughter? So I was like, ah, granddaughter. <laughs> that was interesting. I'm saying if you are as old as I am and above, and you think you have slept in the work of the Lord, stand up, renew your vows with your Lord, and be ready to be used in SOPD, DOP department. Can you rise up? I'm aware you are busy, you have work, you have commitments, you have a spouse to cook for, you don't want to be held in church activities. Your wife, your husband can be so angry with you and even divorce you for sparing time to be in the Lord's work. You know, sometimes you can be needed to be here when you need to be going for outing. You need to go out. Eat fine things. You know, the burgers. Uh, uh. Whether it's chicken or meat. Hmm? Hmm? Today they have got uh, vegetable burgers. So, Elder, I want you to commit these two brothers who have risen now uh, to the Lord. Brothers, just come in front. Elder, commit them in prayer. Commit the whole church in prayer. Uh, I really pray that the leadership of this church can follow up on the applications to the members of this church. A lot of them desire to be here, but the applications have never matured. 
and we are limiting the work of God, the usual faces, which is doing an injustice to the house of God. Thank you. God bless you. Let's meet in the afternoon. Amo Yambo. Amo Yambo.